Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Michal. Yeah, hi. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming and taking time of your day. Uh, so I will be talking today about the automation that we're building in the public cloud team that resolves, that revolves about image releases to the public cloud. The topics today, short intro about myself, just in case there's somebody that doesn't know me. Um, then I'll describe the problem. Basically, this is the idea to give everybody a, a, an idea of what how big the sandbox is of the problem space we're trying to solve with the automation. Then I'll talk about the automation itself. We're about 75, 80% there. Um, and then I'll you know highlight some of the areas of what is left. And then I'll show a picture of what it's supposed to look like when we're all done. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat and I'll try to come back to them uh, towards the end. This is uh, a lot of content, so I don't really want to interrupt or I will definitely run out of time. Uh, something about me, yeah, I'm Robert Schweikert. I'm a distinguished engineer, uh, RJ Schweikert Souza. I've been here for a while, been focused on the public cloud for roughly about 10 years. I'm very honored to be able to represent the public cloud team. I live in Asheville, North Carolina, also known as Beer City, and you will notice the beer theme coming into play here later. The team, uh, developers and um, project manager, product manager, then we have help from, for some of the stuff, we had help from other teams, and then we have uh, two newcomers to the team, Assis and, and Grace, that are not pictured here. What is it that the public, public cloud team does? So in a nutshell, we build all the images on uh, Sousa Linux Enterprise family that get published in our primary partner, CSP networks. So that's AWS, Azure, uh, and Google. We maintain all the packages in the public cloud channel, which have now grown to about 600. We operate the public cloud infrastructure, update infrastructure. That's a little more than 300 servers running. Then there is a public cloud information tracker, Pind, that gets operated by the team and, and the code is developed. We maintain a technical relationship between the AWS, Azure, and GCP. We built the automation, which is the talk, the talk of this, uh, the topic of this talk. And we help other teams uh, with public cloud related topics if they come up. So let's go on and describe the problem space that we're that we're looking at for the for the automation. So you know you could ask, hey, what's the big problem? We only have three products. How bad can it possibly be? So the three products are basically the Slee family, Susan Manager, and then Rancher. And uh, containers are currently not part of the automation, but but we have started to work with the Rancher team to get uh, Rancher management platform into. AWS uh, marketplace and, and other projects are on the way. So there will probably be automation around that eventually. But if we just look at the SLEE family alone, that maps to SLES, SLES for SAP, SLEE for HPC, SLEE Micro is in the works, SLEE something else is coming. And then, then of these, we have uh, flavor builds, SAP Cal, Seahost, hardened images are coming, and then for SUSE Manager and, and we have server and proxy and then you add the versions to that and very quickly you can see how this explodes into a lot of images so we have a, um, a proliferation of images that need to be managed with respect to life cycle image description the images all need to be monitored in the build service that they build and are ready for release and so on so this is one problem uh, that we're grappling with and the automation is uh, helping us solve. Then for extra fun, of course, every CSP has their own idea of what publishing means. And in some CSPs, publishing means multiple things. So we have to deal with, with these differences for each uh, of the providers that we're working with, where we want to publish our images. So that's another dimension of, of the problem. What does this mean in practical terms? A full-blown CVE release, think you know, think Spectre that goes you know back and affects pretty much every every version of the kernel. In this example, we end up pushing out about 90, 95, and you know, soon over 100 images. If there's a full-blown CVE that is critical, 
and affects you know everything. And this number is growing, as you as you saw on the previous slide. There are a number of projects that we're working on, you know, hardened images and so on. And they all then need to get refreshed when there's a critical scene. Another problem that we're facing is if there's you know a basic change in the packages that we would want to be in every image, we end up having to touch probably 80 or more image descriptions across multiple projects in, in the build service. And so you can see the numbers are relatively big. And you know, the, although there is repetition, uh, you know, manual work also, as we all know, introduces errors, cut and paste, you name it. And that's kind of also something that we're trying to reduce with the automation. In addition, we have a cor correlation heuristic problem. For example, here is a name as it appears in AWS. So the image is named SUSE SLES 15 SP3, date code, yada, yada, yada. And that image came from, well, what you see here, the name you see below, uh, which is the way it pops out of the build service. So these things also have to be correlated. And doing that manually, again, just increases mental hoops and errors and so on. And that, that's where the automation also helps. And then there's an information gap. Um, basically, in, in the build service, you know, when a package changes that is included in image, the image gets rebuilt, and we're more or less on a constant rebuild cycle. But the images in the public cloud get released at a specific time in point. And so the question is, or, or one request that we have from customers was, well, we want information about image changes. So that took a while. We first had to figure out what does it even mean, uh, you know, to present changes for an image, since it's a conglomeration of things. And what we ended up settling on were these, you know, four categories that you see here. Those are the image configuration changes. I so so these are changes that we make to the image descriptions. Then we call out specific CVE fixes that were fixed in an image. That was one of the top priorities from some of our customers and partners. We highlight the version changes of the packages, and then there is a, a change log of all the packages that changed. So this is what we agreed on the image changes should be, and then that information gets tracked. To make this possible, we had to change our release process that we had uh, previously. So that's kind of the sandbox of you know, the problem space that we, that we were trying to tackle. And with that, we can talk about the automation itself. A little bit of history on the, you know, on, on a process evolution from manual to automated. So until, you know, probably mid 2016, everything was manual, uh, cut and paste. People had commands in in files on their systems, and then they cut and paste, replaced a few values, and ran those commands one after the other. Uh, for various platforms. At that time, the landscape was a lot smaller and you know, we, we managed. Uh, it was still you know, taken about two days at that time when there was a full uh, CVE release. Then the next phase we entered, we wrote some command generators uh, that then you know, generated the commands that, sh that should be run. Uh, to, you know, that was an early phase in automation. Then the second part, and that, that really started, um, you know, uh, we used this MASH and image proof between 2019 and 21. So there was still a semi-manual uh, phase. And, and I'll talk about these tools in a little while. And then, you know, early this year, we added more automation or more automation around these two core tools came, came about and we've been using that for about seven months. And we expect to have a fully automated uh, infrastructure sometime in 2022. The goals for the automation, reduce the effort required to manage the image releases, make it possible to manage at, you know, an increasing number of images without throwing more people at the problem, right? So this is the core piece. We can't just expect to add people that is not realistic. So the automation has to take over what, you know, people used to do. 
Clearly, we want to eliminate and reduce errors, right? Cut and paste errors, inconsistencies in descriptions, ending uh, an image release ending up in the wrong place. All of those things happen when you do a lot of manual work that is repetitive, right? We also need to handle extra data, the pint data. We wanted to eliminate tribal knowledge, right? Early on, there were only one or two people that could do releases. And now with the automation, the high level commands are documented. Pretty much everybody on the team can do, can do the release effort when, when needed. And we need to support the expansion to other uh, cloud providers if there are more uh, providers for which SUSE will build the images. And they then need to get pushed out. So those were the general goals, and, and we started about five years ago with, with this. Um, the first tool that we really wrote from, you know, that we started out was image proof, IPA, or image proof application. That's a wrapper around PyTest and test infra. It has built in distro specific tests for, you know, SLES, OpenSUSE. They, and then we had contributions from the OpenSUSE community for, for RHEL. Uh, you know, and then uh, there are also some flavor specific tests. So I mentioned earlier that we also built flavor images and, and there are specific tests for those. And then there are framework specific tests. So IPA knows how to do certain things, for example, in EC2, how to access the API to stop a running VM and restart it. So, so, you know, those are tests. It is modular. So RHEL testing, again, was externally uh, contributed and can be easily expanded to cover us other distributions. Before we had IPA, we, on a release, we did minimal testing. Everything was manual. So we fired up an instance and then said, OK, it, it works here. And that means everything that's built with the same kernel and the same this and the same this is expected to work equally. And then a lot of stuff didn't get tested, right? And not every image was tested. And so we had a very big gap, really. And then once IPA come online, and um, and then with the help of the QA team, there was a lot of work done to integrate IPA and OpenQA. And today, we're at the point where every image gets tested before it is released. And every maintenance update uh, is also tested in the public cloud before it gets released. So this has brought us a huge step forward with respect to quality. You know, things like, oh, yeah, we released X and it broke the boot process in, in the public cloud. Those things have gone away. And, and that, you know, has improved our quality that is externally visible. So this, is, this was a great step forward. The second step then was to put, you know, the uploading and the image publishing around the testing infrastructure. So this is where MASH comes in, and this is another public project. MASH pulls the image from OBS. It uploads to any of our three partners. Uh, actually, it also uploads to Alibaba and Oracle. So it is, again, it's a modular design, can easily be expanded to include um, you know, OpenStack and other cloud frameworks for image uploading and testing. Then it then MASH runs test IBA. It handles various publishing mechanisms based on the, the target provider that is being used, and it handles image deprecation. All of these things were done manually before, and you know, somebody had to sit there and watch every process, watch that the images get copied to the various region in the various providers. Uh, so again, it was very tedious. And now Someone just has to submit a job to MASH, and then the rest is, you know, pretty much uh, automatic. MASH itself is driven by a job doc document, which is a JSON file, and there's a MASH client that people have installed in their systems, and you submit your job, and then MASH figures out the rest based on the information in the job document. It knows the target CSP, it knows the upload procedures, publishing, and so on. And MASH can also be set up, uh, the, the document can be configured so that you can stop after testing. Not everything has to be published. So the, the pipeline is also flexible as to the stopping point. So after MASH, once we use that for a while, 
you know, chasing documents are not necessarily the most human friendly. So, you know, mistakes happen, cut and paste things and so on. And so we needed a way to, you know, generate these JSON uh, files. And that's where MashHouse comes into play. MashHouse is an internal project because it's, you know, our specific conventions and our account setup, setup of um, the projects in the build service and all of those are basically encoded. So MashHouse is more or less our heuristics engine and all the heuristics that exist in order to get images from the build service into the public cloud and get them published. That's kind of encoded in MashHouse. And so that, that's why this is an internal project. Again, before MashHouse, one had to, you know, create these job, job documents, um, JSON files manually. We dealt with uh, cut and paste errors, inconsistencies, and so on. As we were walking, working through MashHouse, we ended up with more consistent descriptions. And now, of course, we have error-free chase and generation. So another step, step forward in the automation. Now, once we had all of that, we still ended up with, OK, somebody has to you know, push all these buttons all the time. So that's where Brewmaster comes into play, another internal Git project. And, and again, because it you know, is tying very specific pieces of the build service and other, other things things together. So what Brewmaster does, it does, it releases the image in the build service. Uh, this is where, you know, our, this is where we've solved the temporal problem by using this release process for the changelog generation. So the image gets released from the, from the project, which is the PubCloud project that continuously rebuilds into the release candidate project. So now we have a, a snapshot in time. Then we use MashHouse to generate the job doc. Then from there, Brewmaster pushes everything into Mash, which uses image proof to test the images. Then we generate the diff files. We upload the diff, diff files to an S3 bucket. And then the project we're currently working on, which is Pine Data Manager, will be integrated into Brewmaster so that the Pine database, and I'll explain a little more about Pine in a minute, so that the Pine database automatically gets updated, which then is, you know, externally visible to pine.susu.com. Um, and then once all of this process is done, we push the images from the release candidate to release project, and that's where the images then are there for reference, right? So Brewmaster implements a publishing process from beginning to end. There are no more, so the only manual step that exists at this point is basically somebody runs a Brewmaster command to release a specific image versus previously having to do all of these steps manually. So another, another step in the automation taken forward. And Brewmaster, as I mentioned, is, you know, we've been using that now for about seven, eight months, and it's, it's worked really well for us. So. Then there's the life cycle, which we also, you know, need to automate. And, and so there is, we have another internal uh, project called Lambic, and that's a collections of tools that kind of handles the life cycle and of images and, and a few other things. So there's the image life cycle monitor, which is driven off pint data. And then the image life cycle monitor drives Brewmaster. And so this encodes our three month rolling relief cycle of the images. Basically, um, image life cycle monitor runs every day and looks, hey, is there an image that is three month old? And if, it, if there is an image that is three month old, then it kicks off Brewmaster to release a refresh image, right? So this is the life cycle monitor uh, does this daily and life cycle monitor also handles image deletion once an image has been deprecated for six months, it is getting deleted because we don't want the old stuff. And then there's a project in red. So the end of life monitor, that's basically we're waiting for. Uh, we're eager to use uh, the new database that the maintenance team is working on that contains all the image uh, lifecycle information. So once that is available, we'll implement an end of life monitor, which will then drive Pine Data Manager, Pine Data Manager, you know, drives Pint, and then 
uh, from Pine, we come back to the lifecycle monitor and you'll see all that, how that fits together in the end. So back to the image explosion, right? So, so far we've covered how does the releasing work and everything, um, but we still have this other problem of potentially having to touch, you know, 80 or more image descriptions about multiple projects in the build service if we want to make some basic changes. So this is where Cake comes into play. Uh, Cake is is working progress. It's progressing well. We're you know we're getting to the point where uh, we can use it to generate image descriptions. This is a public project, and it base and again it addresses the issue of not having to touch, you know, AD image descriptions if we want to make a basic change. Also. Uh, with keg recipes, which describes how uh, Kiwi image descriptions are built, we can fulfill a long-standing custom request of making our image descriptions public. Previously, the sources were maintained only in IBS, and they were not visible. We've, you know, had multiple requests over the years, um, you know, to for people that want to take our image built as templates and then build their own. So that is now solved with keg. Along the way, we found lots of inconsistencies in our, our image descriptions, which is not surprising. And now we're to the point where the SLES 15 SP4 image descriptions uh, that are upcoming will be the first descriptions that will be generated with CAG. And then we'll go for, from there and you know do this backwards. And one can then propagate a change in, you know, in the GitHub project in CAG recipes and that can be propagated to you know, all the image builds if necessary. So a, a person will only have to make a change in one place, and then automation runs to propagate the change throughout the change of image descriptions. So what's left? Well, the, the list is still relatively long. Uh, there's a CVE image push or monitor that we want to implement. So basically, when a CVE release needs to get pushed out. You know, we want to make sure that somebody doesn't have to get sit there and collect all the affected images and then make a list and then push them out. So that all needs to get automated. Then the composition of the image description, fetch from keg. Well, it's called Compose Kiwi Image Description, but fetch from keg is what we started with as a name. And so that will be integrated. This is a build service service that will compose the image descriptions once keg recipes gets updated in GitHub. Um, then we want to do automate the deployment of the tools, right? There, there's automation there. Obviously, we have a number of tools. They need to get pushed out, deployed to a system where the tools run. So we're working on automating that part. Uh, Pine server itself. So Pine server is a public cloud information tracker, which has a history of all the images that we've ever released, all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, the first image re was released in AWS some 11 years ago. And we have a history of all the images from that way forward, all the way uh, to plus 15 SP3 today. So one can trace the ancestry of every image in every cloud provider anything that we ever released is, is in Pine. And so previously that information was, you know, served by uh, application running in a VM that was processing XML. Obviously, this list of images keeps growing and growing. And so what we had created was a system that needed an ever larger memory footprint. Eventually, you know, that was no longer tenable. And so we worked on a replacement. The new implementation is a Lambda function that runs in AWS. Um, the Lambda function is based on a SLES container. It uses RDS as a back end and CloudFront as a front end. And you know, a lot of this implementation was done by the systems engineering team. So thanks for that. And the, the database itself will be fed by the Pine Data Manager project that is under active development and that was started, you know, testing now. Others, other things that we're working on in this case with the QA team is the integration of Brewmaster with OpenQA. So the idea is that um, 
while IPI runs smoke tests, we also want to make sure that you know a larger test set is in, included. So what we want to do is we basically want to ask uh, the OpenQA backend to say, is this image that we pushed into release, has this been tested and, and is it okay? So that's kind of another level where we want to make sure that more tests run than the IP or have run before we release. We can't really run the full test suite during the release process because it takes too long. So we want to make sure that we're pushing the proper, a proper image that has been tested from the build project into the release project. And then that is the one that goes out the door. There's always work on robustness, you know, driving out sporadic failures and things like that. And of course, we want to continue eliminating manual steps in the image releases. So there's a lot of stuff left to do. When we're all done, the idea is that it looks like this for the image creation process. So we have a person that modifies CAC recipes. Uh, then there's the automated generation of the image description. They, that ends up in the build service projects, in the develop projects. From there, we test those image descriptions. And then somebody does a deep co copy and pushes that into the SUSE namespace. And so it en ultimately ends up in a released image. So that's the, that's the goal for the, um, for the image descriptions itself. And then for the release process, this is the picture, everything from beginning to end. So you can see here, Pine plays a central role in, in that the data that is in Pine basically drives this more or less closed loop. We have the life cycle monitor that you know looks at the data. It drives the release cycle. When an image needs to be refreshed, then it kicks off Brewmaster. Brewmaster pulls, pulls the images from the build service. It pushes them out to the public cloud providers. Then Brewmaster updates the Pint data uh, through Pint Data Manager, and that again drives Pint, which drives the lifecycle monitor. So we have a nice closed loop here. Um, and if we need to make changes to the image release cycle or you know, certain images, then from, from a coding change, the only thing we have to touch is the lifecycle monitor. Then for, for CVE releases, which is currently still done completely manually, uh, this front part here is completely manual. The goal is to have either CVE monitor, which basically means we will drive of the oval database. We look at the score, the, C, the CSSS score, and then decide whether images need to get released or not based on that. And then that would drive Brewmaster. And again, we start the cycle over. And then last but not least, we have the end of life monitor, which will be driven by the product life cycle database that the maintenance team is working on. And it will then drive Pine Data Manager and Pine Data Manager itself, um, you know, drives Pine and drives the life cycle manager and round and round and round we go. So the idea is that we have, a, you know, mostly closed loop with every, with only, uh, two or three touch points uh, for human intervention, and the rest is expected to go automatically. And with that, I was really fast. And here we go. Questions? Uh, yeah, so the automation is, is modular. Um, MASH, image proof, any of that can be expanded to new cloud providers with, you know, a reasonable, a reasonable effort. So that, you know, expects that there are APIs that we can access and we have accounts and things like that. But generally, there's nothing in the way of expanding the automation to other CSPs. Other questions? Yeah, I just... Uh read the question for the recording. Uh, yeah. Does this automation allow for expanding images to more public cloud beyond those three? We have the recording. All right. Then I guess everybody gets 15 minutes back. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.